COVID-19 is a highly infectious virus that is spread mainly through respiratory droplets produced when an infected person coughs or sneezes. We advise caution to others who wish to visit these locations and accept no responsibility for your own actions if infected with the COVID-19 virus. Please contact a healthcare provider if you feel you have symptoms or dial 911. For more information about COVID-19 and its symptoms please visit www.cdc.gov. Thank you. Annex. 
Today she's painting for housing and a communication center. The main naval base is a little island called Mocha Chica Key, which is a couple miles north of us. The U.S. Navy first made use of our deep water harbor in the 1820s to help control the pirates, and the Navy's been here ever since. From the 1820s to the present day, we're further south than Brownsville, Texas. We're 300 or so miles further south than Cairo, Egypt. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Captain. Thank you, Captain. Ocean 
is the White Street Fishing Pier. At the foot of the pier is the Key West AIDS Memorial, dedicated in 1997. The White Street Fishing Pier is a place to go fishing and to see the sunrise. Ladies and gentlemen, the very first European to ever see Key West back in 1513 was Ponce de Leon. Ponce de Leon actually never set foot on Key West, but he saw from the ocean, he marked it on his map, and he claimed it for Spain. Well, a few years later, some other Spanish explorers followed Ponce de Leon's map, and they did come on shore here. What they found when they got here was that there were Indian mounds all over Key West. So the Spanish thought there must have been a big Indian battle here, and they named the island Cayo Hueso for Bone Island. Well, about a hundred years later, when the English came along, they said to the Spanish people living here, what do you call this place? The Spanish guy said, Cayo Hueso. Well, the English guys didn't know any Spanish, so Cayo became Key, and Hueso became West. So Key West is really just a bad translation of Cayo Hueso, or Bone Island. And now, ladies and gentlemen, okay, ladies and gentlemen getting back to how we became the Conk Republic. The Conk Republic was born on April 23rd, 1982, in response to a U.S. Border Patrol blockade of Highway 1, where it meets the mainland. The Border Patrol stopped every single car searching for illegal aliens and contraband. As you can imagine, this caused a huge traffic jam, and people stopped coming down to the Keys altogether. Our mayor pleaded with the federal government to remove the blockade, but he was ignored. So, the only choice left over to us was secession. We seceded from the Union to call ourselves an independent nation, the Conk Republic, and declared war on the U.S. We bombed part of the Navy base with stale Cuban bread. Later on in the afternoon, we surrendered and applied for a billion dollars of foreign aid. Now, we did not get the foreign aid, of course, but thanks to all the media attention, we got the blockade removed. And we've been proud to be the Conk Republic ever since. Every year in April, we celebrate the birthday of the Conk Republic. And believe me, it's quite a party. And in conclusion, the motto of the Conk Republic is, we seceded where others failed. And now, ladies and gentlemen, as you're about to see, soon to be on the left, is the Key West Cemetery. The original cemetery was down by the Southern Falls Point, but it was destroyed in the hurricane of 1846. So the city fathers thought it would be prudent to put the new cemetery further inland, and they put it right here in the dead center of town. As you can see, most graves are above ground. As I mentioned earlier, Old Town is basically a coral rock. Many of the epitaphs in the cemetery mark Key Westers' odd sense of humor. There's one epitaph for a Betty P. Roberts. She's a hypochondriac, and she had written on her gravestone. See, I told you I was sick. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're entering one of the nicest neighborhoods in Old Town. Almost all the houses in Old Town were built in the 1800s by ship's carpenters. The ship's carpenters were master craftsmen. They built their houses the same way they did their ships, snug and trim. They used mortise and tenon joints instead of nails so that the houses would give us sway in a high wind. Now, the ship's carpenters added something that we call gingerbread to many of the homes they built in the 1800s. On the left, there's a white greenhouse with arrowhead gingerbread along the roof line. The very next house on the left is a yellow house and has everyone's favorite gingerbread man gingerbread along the roof line. On the right, house number 1017 has the more ornate Victoria.
Korean style gingerbread. So there's all different types of gingerbread all over Old Town. Wall Street, named for William Pope Duvall. He was the first civilian governor of Florida. Robert Ripley, I believe it or not, fame, but the Wall Street's the longest street in the world. It goes from the Gulf of Mexico behind us, the Atlantic Ocean in front of us. It takes about 20 minutes to walk all the way down to Wall Street. We call it the Duval Crawl. On the far left corner is the most famous bar in Key West, the Sloppy Jazz Bar. This is where it's place on the farm. Nobody's going to show you Sloppy Joe. Russell. Inside Sloppy Joe's, my business buddy, I'm having to play another number of people. Sloppy Joe's is going to down the street in 1937. Sloppy Joe Russell, that's how I was the landlord, over a black dollar rent increase. He got very upset. He went to the bars to the booze and his buddies, and the Sloppy Joe's down to his current location. Over on the left is the Hard Rock Cafe. If you look up at the top of the Hard Rock Cafe, this obviously is a private residence of 1880 by the son of William Curry. The top of the Hard Rock Cafe. On the right, this White House, the elevated torch, is the oldest house in Key West, built in 1829 for Captain Wallington and his seven daughters. Captain Wallington's seven daughters had a long way to walk to school. They had a really rough over on the right. This yellow building was Key West's first school. It was a private school, but you can still see the old school bell out there on the second floor porch. And now, as a very wealthy city, that prosperity continued until 1930, when, of course, the Great Depression struck. Key West was hit very hard by the Great Depression. We went from being one of the richest cities per capita in the U.S. to one of the poorest. More than 80 percent of the population went under relief. The city went bankrupt. They had to return the city charter back to the state government. The federal government sent an administrator down here named Julius Stone. Mr. Stone looked around. He decided that Key West would make a great tourist mecca. So they started planting trees and shrubs. They started mixing up some of the old historic homes. They planned that grand opening for Christmas of 1935. But then, on Labor Day of 1935, that terrible hurricane struck 50 miles north of us, destroying 40 miles of Flemers Railroad. But, as I mentioned earlier, three years later, 1938, they built the Overseas Highway using Henry Flemers Railroad bridges for the first Overseas Highway. So thanks to Henry Flagler, thanks to the Overseas Highway, we finally did rebound from the Depression. And then,